What is up my friends? My name is Guy. I'm a full-time filmmaker obsessed with self-development and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, this is where I discover tips, tricks, and tools that help me on my personal journey of self-development. The previous video in this series is linked to below, which is all about answering essay-based questions in an exam scenario. This time we're looking at longer term papers that you have a couple of weeks to write, could even be as big as a term paper if you're still a student. But of course, this applies to any kind of content creation. It's not just about essays. These same workflows can be applied to scripting videos, to scripting feature films, to planning blog posts. And this workflow will actually incorporate a lot of the basic functionalities of Rome into a real life example. So if this is your entry to Rome, or if this is the first video you're watching on my channel, it might actually be a really nice way to get introduced to Rome or to refresh some of the basics if you've been using it already. Um, so let's get into it. So the essay I'm using here as an example was for an economics class on natural resources. I actually turned this essay into a video not so long ago. Uh, this is a, a quick plug for my other channel. I have a, another YouTube channel called Sisyphus Brothers, which I'm linking to below, where my co-producer James Roberts and I are doing mini documentaries. So these are focused on money, markets, investments, filmmaking, the business of filmmaking, etc. So if you're interested, uh, please check it out. And basically what I've argued here is that the development in oil prices over the years have paradoxically pushed renewable energy forward in ways that nobody really predicted. Um, so it's, it's a fairly uh, brief essay here, five pages, double spaced. I'm just gonna walk you through how I would set this up if I started from scratch. So my first step would be to go into Rome and I would create a page specifically for this essay. So let's call it development in the oil market. So that's the working title for now and that's our page. And once we're in this page, the next step would be to give a rough outline of this essay. So I mentioned it in my last week's video. Um, I tend to follow this uh, kind of tried and true structure. So I've just quickly typed this out. This is the structure that I would use for this. So we got an introduction. We've got a core argument, number one, where I cite one specific scholar uh, with a strong and interesting stance. And then I move to core argument number two, where I cite an opposing scholar. Uh, the, the further opposed they are, the easier this gets because then my core argument number three is what I call my own stance. And this is where I try to bring in a new perspective on the topic, my own unique perspective if possible. And that will usually fall somewhere between the stance of scholar one and scholar two, which is why the further away those two scholars are, the more uh, space you have to create your own perspective here. And then you wrap it up with a conclusion that basically regurgitates the introduction, but a lot more concisely. So from there, really it's about filling in these core arguments, right? And what I'm gonna be doing is I give a rough outline of the entire essay in this page, and then I'm going to come up with keywords that relate to this particular topic for which I can create separate pages. And the purpose of that is to have pages for those keywords that allow me to pull in unlinked references from all over my Rome graph. So what I'll do here is um, reference pages. So I'll be creating those reference pages here. And what I'll start with is my lecture. So I've already set this up. Uh, I'm going to link here to um, my econ lectures. So we have this in here. Um, and right away, I can open this up in the sidebar. Um, so those are just, you know, three notes that I pulled in for this example. So we've got this over here. Um, I can pop these in to make it a bit more concise, allow space for other things. And then um, the next thing I would do is open up a, a Google search uh, for oil markets. So that'll be a page where I can um, pop in a lot of notes from Google searches. So. Uh, these are some older sources because this was a while ago. Um, but these are some of the sources that I referenced in the paper. And so I'd be pulling these in here. So if I was doing research over the course of a couple of days before I start writing the essay, every time that something would strike me, I would just highlight it and I would save my highlight to Readwise. This is because I have my Readwise and my Rome connected already. So it would create separate pages for each article that I can then 
likewise open in the sidebar. And next, we're gonna go to keywords, uh, oil markets. So what I'm going to do here is, this is basically a page where I can type out any and all keywords based on my research that are gonna come up here. So right away, I'm going to do oil. Um, so we're gonna have oil, we're going to have, as an example, um, supply, we're going to have demand, uh, we're gonna have renewable, renewables, and we're going to have energy. I would keep this going uh, because this is really about just coming up with as many relevant keywords as possible uh, you know, within a reasonable amount of time. So let's say you take five minutes for this. Um, and then you can open each of them up and here's where it becomes interesting. Um, oil, go to your unlinked references and what Rome will do is it will show you all of the mentions of oil in your entire graph. So now you can go through and you can selectively link those mentions that are useful for your essay. So this is in our Google search. So of course we already have this. So this is interesting here. Uh, this, I might link this one here. Um, so I'm basically going through and I'm reading and I'm quickly skimming through the notes that I've already taken. So here, this is interesting. We have uh, the transcript of the talk by um, the energy advisor to Obama and Biden, Holstein, which is one of the videos that I watched in preparation for this essay. So I'm gonna wanna link this. And then you go through and you do this for supply. So let's check out supply. So this is interesting because supply is such a general key term. Uh, it's gonna pull up a bunch of stuff that at first glance doesn't have anything to do with this topic. For example, this is an article that I wrote on Ripple and I wouldn't have thought of necessarily involving cryptocurrency in this essay. I might not, but this is giving me an additional idea that I may or may not use, which is nice. So let's just link this just in case, you know? So you're gonna go through and do this for each key term and that's really where your notes become processed. I've mentioned this before in this series that I don't process my notes as aggressively as some other people do. So there are ways to process notes more carefully on an ongoing basis in your Rome system. And I might actually do a video comparing a couple of strategies that are out there for that. But what I tend to do is I leave my notes relatively raw and unprocessed because I, I like to take a, a just in time approach as opposed to a just in case approach. So this is the just in time. I'm writing the essay, I go through my relatively unfiltered notes, but because I'm selectively tying them to keywords that are relevant for this particular essay, I'm only looking at the ones that have you know, a remote chance of actually contributing to the work that I'm doing in this very moment. And I'm choosing which ones to link and which ones I don't link. And that is a form of processing in and of itself, but it also gives me a chance to go through more carefully, this is where I'm gonna be reading some of those notes more carefully, and I might add a couple of hashtags here. Um, so for example, so just looking at this here, I, I might put this in you know, a startup hashtag, or I might add inspiration to this. I'm not doing it just for the sake of doing it, I'm doing it because I'm reading this already in relation to my essay, so why not add a couple of hashtags while I'm reviewing these? So at this point, I'm done with all the keywords. What really happens here is it provides a chance for a whole bunch of your other notes to get pulled into this workflow. This could include notes that you've taken in other lectures, lectures outside of econ, for example, uh, but also conferences that you've attended. Maybe you've taken some podcast notes with air quotes and you've sent them into your realm. So since you've chosen this particular topic, or in this case, I've chosen this particular topic for this essay, there's a good chance that you've chosen the topic that you like to engage with outside of lecture as well. This might be something that you're genuinely interested in. So there's a high chance that it pops up in a lot of the other media that you're consuming, or even just in everyday thoughts that you're journaling on, and that might make it into your daily notes sections. It might not have a specific tag attached to it, but if you've chosen the relevant keywords and you're linking them through your unlinked references, this is where they're going to emerge and this is where they're going to contribute creatively to your essay. So now I'm taking these specific blocks and I'm opening them up in the sidebar by clicking on this bullet right there. So this is gonna open up there. This is gonna open up there. And I'm doing this for each keyword. And then to that, I'm adding my 
lecture notes in the sidebar here, and I'm adding my Google search. So that already gives me a lot of material. Um, this is everything that I found in Google. This is everything that I'm pulling from my lectures. And these are these unlinked references down here. And now I'm taking these sources and I basically have two choices. I can either pull in specific blocks right into this outline. And the way to do this is to press Alt or Option on your keyboard. And holding down the key, you can just drag in the specific blocks and it's going to automatically create a block reference right in there. So this really isn't necessary. It just depends on how messy your sidebar is. If you're comfortable um, leaving everything open in the sidebar, then that's great. You can just reference your materials over there and you can basically start writing directly in there. But if your sidebar is getting extremely overwhelming, what you might want to do is just pull in the relevant materials into your main page and then afterwards you can close down that section of the sidebar. So it just starts becoming more organized. Same here. You might pull this one here into argument number uh, two and then I can close this one down. And this is where I might just get some inspiration from this. So I can say um, include um, ripple example. I'm just going to put this little reminder down here in case I want to include it and I know where it lives. So then I can pull um, Holstein's talk into here. This is interesting. Um, if I follow this block reference here real quick by double clicking, uh, I'm going to get to this particular block. And I know that this here is from Amos Holstein's talk at Carnegie. This is a video I came across in my research. One thing I like to do is to open up this video uh, use a YouTube downloader and then pull in the MP3 file into otter.ai. And then it spits out a transcript, which I can copy paste directly into Rome. And so these are highlighted sections from that transcript. And that makes uh, direct quoting extremely easy because not only do you have everything written out for you already, if you're quoting from a video, it also means that you know exactly where it came from and you have the relevant link baked into your page. So if you put your YouTube link in there and then the transcript below and you have it all neatly in one page, the creation of the bibliography becomes a lot more easy and that's usually what takes the most time. So I will continue to do this and basically fill out my entire outline with the totality of all of the sources. This is very much incomplete, but if I continue doing this, I'm gonna end up having a sort of a full outline with all the sources that I want in there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close down all of these things in the sidebar and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to create a new page at the bottom called final draft. And that is the page where I'm actually going to draft the final version. And this is neat because this page lives in my outline page. So when I open it up, I got my outline page in here, which means I can now shift press and open this up in the sidebar. And now I have my outline with all of the sources right in there, neatly put in the sidebar. So it becomes extremely easy to write out my essay. It, it really is up to you how layered you want to go with this. But the general workflow of accumulating all of your notes, all of your pieces of inspiration or pieces of highlights of different media sources into one concrete outline and then opening that outline in the sidebar is going to work for you over and over again, no matter whether you're applying it to a specific subsection of your paper or to your paper overall, doing it kind of in one sweep like I'm trying to do here. And this works for blog posts. This works for videos. This is how I ultimately came up with the video essay version of this paper. I tagged it as creative projects right here. So it's in my shortcuts and I have all of my information in here. I, I put the essay in here. I put the transcript of Holstein's talk in there and I brainstormed different title ideas and then I did my script outline in there and note that I versioned this. So basically by going control comma, it creates a second version of that same block. And in this case, it makes my entire script disappear. So it's really not very useful. But if I'm dealing with one specific block in here, let's say I'm debating how I want to open this video essay. Um, it is quite useful 
to go to the beginning and then go control comma and then come up with an alternative um, opening. It just allows you to click on there and easily toggle between the two versions here and then you can add more. So this is just a little bonus feature. So for the script outline, I actually did this. I, um, I put two different versions uh, in here. So this is one possible workflow that you can apply when you're writing a term paper or a dissertation. This is really about leveraging this bidirectional network that Rome creates for you on the back end, because again, as the name implies, this is a tool that is fundamentally optimized for researchers. So this idea of coming up with keywords and being able to pull in materials that at first seem way removed from the topic that you're discussing, but link to it in a very strategic way that Rome would have discovered on the back end simply because of that settle custom type of uh, connection that it forms for you. It's really, really useful. So if you're using Rome or if you're using a similar uh, tool like it, try to leverage those baked in functions that really can amplify the amount of perspective that gets pulled into your paper or into your video or into your blog post, whatever it is that you're working on. So that is one way I like to set up my workflow to go from note taking to note processing to content creation. And like I said, I kind of skipped the processing element of this. I do think I'm gonna be making a video on this because it does get talked about quite a lot being like, how do you process notes in Rome? Everything seems so overwhelming. Everything is so messy. Should I just leave it? Or should I make an effort to do regular processing? Let me know in the comments if this is something that you want to discuss further. But for now, that's all I have to say for this week. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here. Please like and subscribe. If you know somebody who's gonna find this interesting or useful, please share it with them. It helps me out a ton by growing this channel and really appreciate your attention. Thanks for giving us a watch. Check out some of the other videos in this series if you haven't already. Check out the Sisyphus Brothers channel for more documentary style content. And until next time, take care.